So what's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out how to build this fantastic mirror and how to put a Reddit sub post on there. Add Google Assistant. Hey Google, say hello to us all. Hi, what can I do for you? And we're also going to see how we can stream YouTube videos to our mirror here along with some really cool Devices like a PIR sensor so that way it shuts off when you're not around. Cool stuff like that. If you, that's something you think you'd be interested in, please stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay guys, so as the intro suggested, we're going to be showing you how to configure some of the cool features that are with the Magic Mirror 2 or Squared or... However, that's done. In any case, um, it comes with some built-in modules, but then also comes with, with the ability for third-party modules, and it even has an SDK to build your own modules if you would like. So very open source. Um, you can find this on their GitHub site that's up there. Um, so basically what you do is you go down here to the modules section, and then you've got all the different modules, and it gives you an idea of how to set them up. So one that most people really want to look at is the uh, weather forecast. So if we click on this, we're going to go down to the weather module, which it tells you um, how it works. And these, I believe, these built-in modules um, are already there. You just have to activate them or at least you know type in the code. So it gives you basically example code on how to put this in. This uses the open weather map, I believe is uh, what it uses. It even gives you a description of all the different pieces. Now, I'm going to show you just how I have configured this. So let's move on over to the Raspberry Pi. And we'll get to these other modules that I have in here momentarily. But let's get to the weather. So we've got current weather and we have the weather forecast, okay? So those are the two different ones that we need. We would like to have, you know, like the 10 day weather forecast as well as what the current temperature and whatever is in your area. So for this, we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need a location ID. I'll show you how to get that here in a minute. And we also need an application ID from your open weather account, okay? So now to get this, let me uh, bring up, do, 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 do. okay, so open weather, so all right open weather map excuse me so i've got this uh pulled up basically what you'll need to do is create an account here it's free you can do um more advanced stuff but um it costs money to do that but you just need the free one to get this to work you just need free so sign up um do the sign in thing or sign up whatever it is and get you a free account when you get your account it will tell you the application id and it'll be a big old long number of uh, basically hexadecimal number. It's really big. So alphanumeric, um, you save that for later. Okay. And don't show anybody what that is. That's your API uh, basically key is what that is. So your application ID. Now you will basically type that in. Once you sign up for it, you'll type that in here. So here's where you'll put in that big old long string of numbers. You'll put that right there. Now for the location ID, this one was very tricky to me when I first started doing this, but this is basically your location, where you're at. Now it comes buried. They give you a like website to go to. This doesn't work. Um, yeah, that, that, that URL does not work. They've changed their URL since this was made. So let me show you how to get to it instead of just giving you another URL, because if it's, if they change it again, post this video, you're going to have a hard time finding it. So you go to API and then current weather data, that's fine. So we're going to choose this API doc. I don't know if you can see that, but click that. Then down here, it's like by city name. We don't care. By city ID. That's what we want. So list the city IDs uh, for the city list JSON can be downloaded from here. So we're looking for this city list.json.gz for, for zip. Okay, so we're going to click on this. And this is our cities list file. So you're going to click on this very first one, the cities list, and you'll be uh, presented with, you'll download the, uh, the the city list. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that list up for you. Oops. I forgot. It, you, you need to open it in WordPad because since it's JSON format, um, Notepad won't figure out the format and it'll just bring it all randomly smashed together. So I'm going to, while this is spinning, let me just go ahead and we'll bring up, bring it up in WordPad. 
It takes it a minute because this is a huge, huge, huge file. Okay, here we go. All right, so huge, huge, huge file. All right, so let me uh, let me get my other stuff back up here. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. Sorry, itching for some reason. All right, so you're going to look for your city's name. Now, I live in Wichita, so Wichita, and not, not county. It's going to be Wichita, U.S. is what mine's going to be. And I'll show you how to verify that you're right. Let's see, Wichita County, Wichita County, no, Wichita, okay. Is this the right one? It's Wichita, U.S., Okay, so I think this is the right one. So once you get a guess if this is right or not, it gives you the latitude and longitude of a general, you know, where it's at. What I suggest doing is take that latitude and longitude and put it into Google. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to use the run menu as a place to put that. So we're going to search for latitude 37.692242 and then comma minus 97.33754. Okay, and that way I can get this into the clipboard. So I'm going to cut this. And then we're going to use good old Google Maps. So once we get our Google Maps up, now we can paste that in here. So I paste that in, hit go. And then it searches right here. If I zoom out, that's Wichita. And I can tell by the, the highways that it is Wichita, Kansas. So here we go. There it is. Wichita, there's Kansas, Wichita, Kansas. So that is the correct one. So now that I know that this is the correct the correct uh, uh, city, now I can use the ID. So see, I'm going to copy this ID number, and then I'm going to paste it right into where this location ID is. I'm going to paste that number right there. So that way it can get my local weather forecast using the application ID that we got for the account that we made right at the beginning of this. And you just put that into both places. You put it in down here and put your application ID right there. And that's it. You restart your uh, Raspberry Pi and off you go. Okay. Now there is a way that you can check your config. And I'll, I'll show you that here in a minute because I'm hiding all of my IDs and stuff. So if I check my config right now, it would basically just explode. So um, I, I will uh, come back to that and show you how that you can check your your uh check your code, what you've done here, as well as how to stop and start your, uh, your, your, basically your magic mirror without having to reboot the entire pie, because that gets annoying after a while. But there's a quick, uh, some quick commands. I'll show you those towards the end of the video. So that's basically how you set up the weather. All right. So now the next one that we'll take a peek at is the calendar. If you have a Google calendar, I'll show you how you can actually import your Google calendar into this where it'll display, uh, I think below the time on the, uh, on the magic mirror. So his, this is the built-in one. Um, it comes with the normal install of the, uh, magic mirror. So you basically just have a config section that you will go ahead and configure it in. So you have where you want to put it, the position, which is top left. I left it as default. And then you have the config to configure it. Now, since I use Google, I'll show you how to do that. But basically you're in the config section, you're going to have, uh, <clears throat> you're going to have calendars. I put us holidays on this one. I think that was default. So I just left it that way. I, I don't know if the header's even shown. Uh, I can't remember. I'll have to look. But in any case, um, so symbol, calendar check, then URL. This is going to be your iCal URL, and I'll show you what that is here in just a second. Um, and then you have your Google username and your Google password is what you're going to do. And I'm going to put the method as basic, and that's what works for me. It pulls all of my calendar information in. Now, where do you find this iCal? Well, if you open up your Google Calendar, here, let me move me around. If you open your Google Calendar up, <clears throat> up here is the gear. You're going to choose settings. And then let me move me back up. And then you choose which calendar you want to look at. So I would choose mine. And then when you choose this, I'm not going to because it's going to have all of my personal information in there, which I do not want to give out. So you will click on this and then you will just scroll down and there will be a section that says your iCal uh URL and you just need to copy that and paste it in to the this spot right here this calendar iCal URL 
that's it. That's all you have to do. And then, like I said, put your Google username and your Google password in here and then restart the module and it should work just fine. All right. So that is it for the camera module or at least the calendar module. But anyway, OK, so now we're pretty much finished with uh, at least some of the integrated ones. You can look up the compliments, the hello world. I took out the compliments. I didn't really want that. I didn't want my mirror saying, hey, sexy to me every day that I look at it. I don't know. I just didn't like that. Anyway, <laughs> um, the clock is already there. Um, you got some simple settings with that uh, where you could tell it, you know, whether it's AM or PM or what 24 hour clock or, or regular. And it's pretty straightforward how that one works. You can just click on uh, the link and it'll tell you how to configure it very easy. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to check out some of the third party uh, modules. These are ones that have created by people like you. Uh, out there that have downloaded the SDK and created it for themselves. So we're going to click on that. And now we're into the third party uh, stuff. So we've got different categories. Uh, they got weather and voice control and all different kinds of things. Now, these are just some modules that I picked, but uh, I will go through showing you how they install and how you do this. So one of the ones that I picked was a Reddit one that I enjoy. And it basically puts up your Reddit um, feed, whichever one that you want to pick, um, doesn't matter. Uh, so let's, let me just, uh, go to it real quick. Oh, what did I just do? Okay. Uh, let's do a find Reddit. There it is. So MMMM for magic mirror modules. what that stands for. And I chose this one. So all you have to do, and it tells you it has pretty good examples. So see, it'll basically post a picture, uh, if there's any pictures on it, and then basically the post, uh, name, and you add this code to it. But the first thing you have to do is you have to basically install it first. So as it says installation, you have to run git clone into the directory magic mirror modules. Then you add the code in your config file. And that's pretty much it. So quite literally, you just run. So you're going to go back. Let's go back to our code. So I'm going to jump out of this real quick. Uh, whoops, quit. All right. So what you're going to do is if you've installed yours the way that I installed mine, you're going to have a directory in here. We'll get, a, we'll get to this Google Assistant stuff here in just a minute. But um, <clears throat> basically, you are going to CD to the directory magic mirror. And inside there, there is one that's called modules. So you're going to CD to this modules directory. This is where you will perform the git you know, clone, and then whatever, uh, whatever URL it is. So for us in this instance, here, let me get, make this bigger. I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting that I'm recording this and it's not big enough. So we're just going to do this git clone and that's all you whoops, dot get. That is the part that you need. So just copy that, paste it in and it should download it. You'll see all of my modules here, but basically you've got the Reddit one right there. So that's all you have to do to, to, to install it. Then we just need to go to our config.js. And then we just uh, put in the information that we need. So MMM Reddit, <clears throat> you do the uh, maker uh, is the one that, that's my subreddit. So you put whatever subreddit, so you know how you do, you can do reddit.com slash r slash and then whatever the subreddit is. Um, that's all you put in here. So I did the maker subreddit because I'm, I like reading that one. There's lots of cool makery stuff, but whichever subreddit you want to put in, you just put that here, <clears throat> display type. I say image. So that way it displays any image in there and look at, uh, they give you in the, uh, deal here. It, they'll give you what all it can do. Uh, there we go. Configuration options. So here's all your different config options and how they work. So you can experiment around with that and play around with it. You can have it where it doesn't display pictures. It just displays like the last uh, eight headlining ones or something. You can have it do display all different kinds of stuff. Um, I just went ahead and went with my maker one and just customized it with width 300 and whatnot. And we'll see that, you know, or at least you did see it in the beginning video. But uh, that's how I basically put the subreddit on there. So easy peasy, not too hard. Now, another one of these that I think is an absolute must have, just looks like the coolest thing ever, is one that is allows it, oops, 
that allows you to screencast. So is this one, MMM Screencast. This one is actually really cool. You can screencast any YouTube video, just like a Chromecast, to your Magic Mirror. This thing is actually pretty darn sweet, and it's very simple to install. So let's get into it here real quick. So all we have to do is, yeah, navigate to the directory with the following command, go to the modules directory again, and then here's our, here's our git clone. So you just have to clone this directory in. And then once it's there, then you go into that directory and you have to install the dependencies, which is real easy. You just do an NPM install. That's literally it. So if you show you what that looks like, so we CD to that modules spot. So you CD to that modules spot, you'll do the git clone that downloads it and then you will have this screencast directory. So you'll CD to that screencast and then you just do npm install and that's it that's it and then it'll install the module you're good to go so then all you have to do to configure it oops helps if i type js okay to configure it is you just add this code right here now one thing i will say when you're configuring that'll that'll trip you up is make sure you remember these commas all these different little commas after every single thing there is a comma even even after the bracket here there's a comma for the next module now the final module in the in the list i don't think has a comma Nope, I lied. It does have a comma. So all of these have commas. Don't forget your comma. Sometimes you'll you'll have a problem with something. It's not working and it's because you forgot the comma. So don't forget your comma. But this is all you have to do. And you can play around with the height and width. I made mine 700 by 900 because I got that 24 inch uh, monitor um, and it looks real nice. And I even put mine dead center in the monitor because if you're, if you're going to watch the video, you probably don't want it up around or whatever. So I put it dead center in the screen. It looked quite nice to me. So I like that. So in any case, that's how we do the screencast, all right? So now we got one more that I think is an absolute must have, or at least that is quite nice to have, is the PIR one. So we've got, oh, I keep hitting control N for some reason. Ugh. So MMM-PIR uh, sensor, I believe is the one that I use. There's a couple of them here. Um, I like the PIR sensor one. It works perfectly fine for me and is very easy to install. So again, we have to do a git clone. Let me make sure of that um, by looking at my folder here. Yep, PIR sensor. So that is the one that I use. Sorry, because there's since there's a couple of them, I get them confused. So all we have to do is do our normal git clone into our uh, modules library, right? And then we go into that, we CD into that, and do our npm install, just like we normally do. But then what we have to do is we have to add our uh, Pi user uh, to the GPIO group. So that way it has the ability to uh, access the GPIO for the PIR sensor, okay? So we do that by um, executing a sudo user mod and then this, this command right here. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. But the user mod uh, dash A dash G GPIO Pi. And that adds Pi to the GPIO uh, user group. Then we just do a change mode and basically just run this command, essentially. It's just real simple. You do this uh, change mode, uh, U plus S, on the option VC bin uh, TV services. And what this does is, just like it says, it allows the turning of turning on and off of the HDMI output because basically what this will do is if the PIR sensor doesn't see motion for so long, it just cuts off the HDMI output is all it does. And then, uh, then the monitor should go into uh, sleep mode. At least that's what mine does. And then when you walk in front of the PIR sensor, it sees that on the GPIO and it turns the uh, HDMI port back on, which should trigger your monitor that your monitor has a signal again and your monitor should come right back on. And that's basically how mine works. It's pretty simple. And then we just set this up uh, with this modules configuration thing. And I'll show you some cool configuration parameters that you want to do for it. So here we go. Um, down here, we have our PIR sensor, okay? And we have sensor pin 22. Now, what you have to remember is that this pin 22 is actually um, the pin, well, in fact, let's just show you. Let me grab a GPIO header. Okay, so here's a great example of our uh, wiring pi. Now, what it says in the uh, in this documentation is that the pins, oh, let's see, where is it at? It it's uses the BCM uh, pin arrangement, I think. Uh, yep, here we go. Please use BCM numbering. Now, I left it at pin 22, but for you to see that, 
basically it uses BCM 22. So that's actually uh, this pin. It's actually pin 15 on the header is BCM 22 or wiring pi three. Don't ask me why all the numbering gets so weird. It just does. That's just the way it is. But it's basically pin 15. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your PIR sensor and you're going to wire it to 5 volts and ground. But then it's signal pin. You're going to hit over here at 15. And let me show you real quick the PIR sensor that I'm using. Okay, so I've got these little miniature PIR sensors. These things are pretty darn small. They're about the size of a dime, maybe. Um, pretty small little sensors, uh, fairly decently priced here on Amazon. So I got links in the description for this little piece of hardware. Great little guys. You get them in two packs, and they work really well. They have a really good range. Um, and we also had to print a little bezel for it, which I will show you here in just a second. But that's basically the PIR sensor. On the bottom of it, it shows you, in fact, if I can get a bottom, oh, there, there we go, you can see it. See how it's, you've got the plus, the minus, and then the signal pin, is, or the out, which is in the middle. So that's all you gotta do, it's five volts, so you just hook it up to the five volt rails, um, five volt power and ground here, and then you hook up the signal pin to pin 22. That's it, simple enough. So once you have done that hardware hookup, then what I do is I do power saving is true. So that way it, it turns off the, the output. But then I say power saving delay. 30 seconds is what that is. That's in seconds. So and you can, like I said, review that in the uh, the let's see here down in here. You can look at this. So power saving delay, additional software delay in seconds before the monitor will be turned off. So it basically does it where it's instant. Um, however, I wanted to give it about a 30 second delay. So basically if it doesn't see movement in front of the monitor for, uh, 30 seconds, then it'll go ahead and shut the output off and, and turn everything down. So, um, that's variable. Obviously you can make it 10 seconds, you know, you can make it a minute, whatever you want to do, but that's basically how you set up the PIR sensor. All right. So fairly simple enough. And now let's go and I'll show you the little bezel that we printed for it. Okay, so quickly opening this up in my 3D viewer, this is the little bezel that I chose. Basically, you'll just, uh, it has a little bit of a lip on the inside here that you can glue, uh, put a bead of glue around this and then place the PIR sensor in there because the PIR sensor has a little bit of a, of a lip on it. So that way you can glue it to the inside of this, which is what I did. And then uh, it creates a nice little little bezel. You drill, you drill a hole uh, for this sleeve to slide through, and then you just press the whole thing through the wood, and then there you go. So you have a nice, neat little kind of like bezel for your PIR sensor. So that's basically what I did for the PIR. So in any case, that's the PIR sensor. Now on to the last, most difficult, yet coolest module that you can put in this thing. Okay, now for the coolest uh, module um, and probably one of the most difficult ones that took me to get ready. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to cover everything that I did. If I missed something or whatever, please ask me in the comments. I will be happy to refer back. And if you're wondering about something, please read the comments down below because I'm sure if somebody has asked me the question, um, I'll have done the research and I'll have uh, responded back to them. So Please read the comments on this video because it'll probably have some useful information in it if you are getting stuck. So as well as um, check out the forum down below um, and list stuff on the forum. Maybe I can talk about it. Maybe others can talk about it. We can help each other out. But anyway, because this was kind of a bear for me. Of course, I had already created my Google Assistant in Google's developer and it's kind of a rigmarole. So if you've already done that, let me know. I may make a special video on that or something like that. I don't know, but uh, in any case, uh, let me know if you're trying to use an existing Google Assistant and reattach it to your mirror because it is kind of a rigmarole to get through it, especially because Google has changed things since my original video. And I'll go through those changes um, in this video real quick. But I want to say I'll probably put a card or something right here. Whoop. But I will put a card or something to show you if you haven't checked out my video on how to build and install the Google Pi, please check that out as well as check out the video on how to create the auto start script for it because you will need to do all of that for this because we need to have the Google Assistant up and running uh, on this Raspberry Pi that's powering your magic mirror before you can actually configure it to work with your magic mirror, okay? So first thing you do is create that, and I'll go through that here in a minute, but here's the module that I use, the MMM uh, Google Assistant module. 
okay? Because it'll display the Google Assistant icon. It'll even say, how can I help when you give the activation word? Um, it installs, fairly simple. Uh, sign up for the free dev account. Of course, it tells you to install everything first. <laughs> and we'll get into this here in a moment. You install the uh, git clone basically into your modules directory and then do our normal NPM install and that'll install that module. Well, then we need to make sure the device is registered and whatnot. Now, this is where it gets sticky. So if you remember back, let me see if I can zoom in on this. This is the link, and I'll put a link down in the description uh, for the, the Google SDK uh, deal that walks you through how to build all of this. So you'll go in and see here's where it's like set up your hardware and network access, configure the test audio, you got to configure audio, then registering your device module. <laughs> this is where it can get weird. If this is your first time building this uh, whole thing, you'll get this screen that they're talking about. If this is not your uh, first time doing this, then you will need a special link to help you, which I will put in the description, that's fine. And that's this registration tool help because you will have to manually, because on your account, it will not show up on your Google SDK. When you get to this point and it tells you to run the actions console and you should see this, you won't see that. So you will have to register it manually using this link and using these tools that they give you to literally command line re-register your device. Otherwise, you will not be able to get the registration uh, uh, ID that basically comes with it that you will need in the configuration. So that's a, that's a big oops if you've already created one of these, but yet it's been a long time and whatnot. However, if you're creating all of this brand new, you've never created a Raspberry Pi with Google Assistant, you're in luck because it will look just like this and it will go just fine. So you'll follow all of this information um, and follow all this information to register the device and everything, and then you will uh, run the sample code. Now, what I've noticed is it tells you to use this hot word approach to run it. I never got that to work. I never got that to work. So what I'm going to tell you, uh, in fact, I'm going to pull up the screen here. And what I'm going to tell you, oh, come on. There we go. All right. Is I used the old method, which let me uh, copy and paste this in here real quick. I use this method. <clears throat> so I hope you guys can read this, but I've got demo dash dash project dash ID. Okay. And then your project ID, which you can get from that Google assistant, uh, uh, you know, when you built that up, you should have saved that because that's a piece of it and it tells you to save it. So your project ID, then your device dash dash device dash model dash ID, and then your device model ID, and then it should fire right up. And that's, that's, that's the code that I use that hot word code. Whoops. That hot word code that it tells you to use. Never got it to work. I just, I never got it to work. Don't ask me why I just, I never got it to work. So that doesn't work. So I want to point that out. This does not work. This method. So once you get all of that put together, then you will also want to create that startup script like that I created that basically has this in it, okay? And throw that into the auto start thing. So that's where you saw this Google Assistant.sh right here. And that's because it just has that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it it's gonna have the uh, pyassistant.py in it. That's going to be the difference. So let me go over that real quick. So when we look at what the module says to do, okay? So the module in here, once you get um, your NPM install done, then you're going to need to, yeah, register your device, which we've already, let's say we've already done that now. So setting up your Google Assistant Pi. So you need to set up your Raspberry Pi and run a sample to verify the Google Assistant is working fine. Then if you are able to launch Google Assistant demo, see the link above, you know, which is that one deal, which is what we were talking about, the demo, you know, uh, dash, dash project ID, and then your project ID, and then dash registration ID, registration ID. Okay, so that, if you're able to do that, oh crap, I clicked the back button. Darn it. Don't you hate it when you do that? You're not expecting it, but you do it anyway. Okay, so once you have done that, <clears throat> let her, oh here, let me let me scroll up. Okay, you should be able to use the pi slash assistant dot py script that communicates with the magic mirror module. Now let me tell you what they're talking about. So 
what that is is in our magic mirror uh, modules. So our Google Assistant module, there is a Python script that is in here that is called, let's see, the Assistant uh, PY that's in here. Uh, let's see, where's that at? Oh, it's in Py. Sorry, I didn't go a directory far enough. So it's in Py. See this Assistant uh, dot PY? That is uh, their startup script to fire all this up, and it communicates with uh the actual magic mirror and it commits and it talks to the other stuff. Now we have to edit this file. So in order to edit this, we're just going to do, I cleared up the screen here. So OVI, the assistant.py. We're coming here and you're going to scroll down to this init pub nub uh, subscript here. And you've got a PyCovig, you've got the subscribe key. So this is your <clears throat> uh, subscription key that you have that you'll be using. So where we get that is you have to sign up in PubNub, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to another screen here, okay? So we're going to be going into this. This is PubNub. So PubNub is basically a publishing uh, hub thing. Oops, I meant to move my picture, not the whole entire screen. So what you'll do is you will sign up for this, okay? So you just do a, do a, do a get started or whatever, sign up. It's totally free, and what it does is you will sign up for it and it will give you a quick subscribe and a publish key. And what that's for is so that way it bounces the information that's coming from our uh, Google Assistant off this, which allows it to be then published to the Pi, it's it, to the mirror. Basically, it allows it all to tie together. So you'll get that uh, publish and uh, uh, subscription script or, or ID those two IDs, and that's what you'll put in here into the subscribe key and this publish key. You'll put those two into there. So that's all you need to do. And so that's all that you will have to do. So now you save that and that's basically what you got to do there. Then the final thing that we need to do is this assistant.python. You can test it. Okay. So we'll be able to run it. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to set up uh, and install the PubNub, PubNub, <laughs> Uh, stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, put that in. And we've got uh, our reference here. So to install the PubNub, sorry, my bad, moving the deal around, PubNub, just to use, uh, you need to do a pip install PubNub uh, 4013. So literally just cut and paste this in and uh, let it install. So that will install everything for the PubSub. Now, uh, downloaded the Pi script on your Raspberry Pi and launch it via a terminal. So all you have to do is use the uh, Python Python 3. So what we'll do, I'm going to move this over. All right. So basically all we have to do is in this folder to test this to make sure it works is we're going to do pi env env slash bin slash Python 3 u assistant py. And if we're lucky, it should go ahead. And there we go. That that shows us that it works. Since it says hello from Python, you should have no errors. You should just have that. And it should work. And now you can talk to the Google Assistant. Okay. So that's basically how it is. So that's what you want to see is that hello from Python. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and control C out of that. Hopefully, if I can. There we go. Control C out of that. So that lets you know that it's actually working, that your assistant is actually, you know, up and running and it's going to work with everything. And it was able to establish with the pub sub and all that jazz. So now we need to do a couple more configurations. So we're going to back up quite a bit. We're going to go to the config. Uh, and then we're going to configure the module. So we're going to put in this module. Uh, I put it in the top right it's where I put it, maximum width, 100%. Sure, I didn't give it any header title of any kind. But then you got your published key. So now your PubNub keys, you put those in here as well. So you have to put it in that uh, assistant.py, and you have to put it in here as well. So publish key, subscribe key. So you put those two things in here. Um, I said update delay 500, good enough. You can change it if you want to. And that's all you have to do for the config. <clears throat> Now, there is one more thing that we have to do. <laughs> I know, I told you, this one's, this one's the long haul one. This one's the one that takes forever to configure. All right, and is the one that also has the biggest room for error. Anyway, so now what we have to do 
is we have to go now, we have to configure that shell script. So we have to VI, the Google Assistant shell script. And I built this, um, let me move down so you can see it. Oh, not the whole thing, damn it. All right, here we go. So basically all we do is we use that same uh, command except with all of the all of the paths. So here's all the pathing. We do the Python 3-U, home, pi, magic pi, magic, or modules, mmm, vol, pi, and then assistant.py. That's it. That's it. We just need a shell script that does that. You need to make sure that that shell script has uh, the execute permissions. So right here, you make sure it has execute permissions. If it does not, you just do a simple change mode, add, whoops, plus X and Google. There you go. That's all you got to do is that command right there. And that should <clears throat> um, add the execute to it. Now, we have to make this where when the Pi boots, it starts up with everything. So to do this, let's see if I remember where this is all at. I may have to look at my notes to remember where this is all at. So give me a second. All right. So we're going to have to CD to our home directory. We're going to have to CD to dot config. And then inside there should be the LX session. Inside of there, there should be the LXDE dash pi. And then inside there is the auto start. All right. So we just need to simply edit the auto start. So we're sudo vim uh, auto start. There we are. And we just add that shell script with the full path. Full path, home pi, Google Assistant SH. That's it. Right quit that, save it, and you should be good to go. Okay, guys, so far we have uh, put in all kinds of different modules. We need to make sure that we haven't made any uh, syntax errors in our uh, coding, basically. And that's what this next thing will tell you. So to check for syntax errors and whatnot, you can do um, an npm run config colon check. And if you run this, it'll be able to, it'll tell you if you have any problems with anything. So looks like da, 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 error home pi JSON. I use that JSON. Is that no such file or directory open package file JSON. This is related to NPM not being able to find a file completer. Oh, maybe it's because I didn't run it in the magic mirror directory. It's been a while since I've done this magic mirror uh, con config. And then now let's let's give it a shot. And I may have to run it in the virtual environment. Oh, nope, there we go. So you have to be, oh, just beating up my microphone. All right, so you have to be in the actual directory uh, with the config file. And then, of course, as you can see, uh, contains no syntax errors. That's all it checks for. If you make a misconfiguration, it'll let you make a misconfiguration. It's fine. It does not, it's not basically like a compiler. It just checks for syntax errors. If you've missed a comma or you missed a bracket or something, that's what it's going to check for. And it's going to let you know uh, what happened. So now if you want to restart your whole uh, magic mirror without actually stopping uh, 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 the, the, you know, rebooting the entire pie. What you'll need to do is very simple command. You just do, uh, and this can be done anywhere, PM2 stop MM, and that will stop the magic mirror. And so there we go. And as you can see, status is stopped. And then basically just like that, you can do the other, you can do a start. <clears throat> and this will restart the magic mirror process. Well, guys, thank you very, very much for sticking with me through all this. Hopefully, this gives you some insight into some of the cool modules that you can do with this. Hopefully, maybe you'll try out some of these. If you try the Google Assistant, please let me know down below. You have any trouble or whatever, I'll help you best I can. Um, let's see what else is in the pipe. I don't know. There's lots of stuff coming. Definitely check out my Patreon link. That helps me out quite a bit. It helps me bring you guys these really cool builds because I finally now, with all you guys' support, want to thank you very much. I can now afford to buy all the materials and stuff to actually build some really cool projects check that out down there hit that patreon you get some free stuff with one of them if not you get your chance to win some free stuff as well as you get some really cool content that is exclusive to my patreon uh, subscribers guys that's enough rambling for me thank you so much for watching the video hit the like definitely hit subscribe ring that bell so you maybe could get notified i don't know google does weird things but it can't hurt hit the bell 
Maybe you'll get notified notified of the next video, but please keep checking back. Check me out on Twitter and Instructables and Facebook and all the different social medias out there because I'm on pretty much all of them. And guys, I will see you in the next video.